And so we say this to you, Mayor, mm -hmm. Governor, President, yes. if you think that they're that powerful that you have to acquiesce and answer to them over us, then you tell them to vote for you in these next elections. That's right. You tell them to support your Democratic National Convention. And we're going to show you how, how we feel about the Democratic National Convention. Turn it up. Thank you. If you think you're going to have a peaceful Democratic National Convention in the city of Chicago while our people starving, that's right. Stay tuned. It's political season in the United States. 2016, we saw a major upset when Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton. 2020, we saw another big upset when Joe Biden beat Donald Trump. Now in 2024, we got the Titans back up again against one another. But this time, situations are different. And that brings me to the great city of Chicago, the third largest economy in the United States. And in August, something's gonna happen in Chicago. Can you guess what it is? The Democratic National Convention. Now the Democratic National Convention every four years has this main purpose, to present from the Democratic Party the president and the vice president who will go on to the national election and face the Republican presidential candidate and the vice president for the Republican party. That's the purpose of it. But stop the show. Chicago has some problems with the Democratic National Convention. And that is why Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson is going to tighten up on security. Let's check it out. We're less than six months from the Democratic National Convention taking over parts of the city. Now we're learning more on the security that'll be in place. On behalf of our city, I am immensely proud and thrilled to welcome this event back to our city. And I'm confident about its success. Chicago Police Superintendent Larry Snelling says they are leaning into what they've learned, especially 12 years ago when thousands marched in protest through the city streets. Well, think about this. Just stop the show again. Chicago is a democratic city, has been so for many years. I'll let you see all the mayors that they've had in the last 60 years or so that have been Democrats. Democrats are there all the time. Not only there, but in other cities like Dalton. Even Tiffany Hingard, who's one of the worst mayors in the country, is a Democrat. And don't believe me? Listen to what Mr. Jason House says in Dalton, Illinois. Listen to what he says for people who just get elected Democrat in his city. And when you look at the real election in Dalton, and so Dalton actually has a Democratic primary. We're largely a Democratic community. Yeah, so whoever wins that really wins the mayoral ship. Yes, so when you look at the numbers of the real election it was on February 21st of the same year. Mm -hmm. During that election, she won by 4%. She oh, beat out the tight. former mayor. Uh, she got the lowest vote total of any mayor that ever won the Democratic primary. Oh, wow. That's right. If you win the Democratic vote, you're already going to be a mayor or a senator. You're going to have everything. So how is it a city that has everything Democratic worried about what's going to happen at the Democratic National Convention? Rewind! <laughs> Let's go back to the lovely Kata Trust. She's a normal citizen just like me and you, but man has she made a name for herself in the last two years. She's been on African Diaspora Network with Phil Scott. She's been on Fox News, MSNBC. Why is she such a voice for black Chicagoans? Well, she is a registered Democrat, but that's about to change. Voting black and voting Democrat is out. She says she learned a lesson. What lesson was that? And one of the things that happened with Brandon Johnson was he was really a lesson to me and probably to other blacks that we can't just be out here voting for people because they look like us. And we definitely can't be supporting people just because they're Democrats, because Brandon Johnson, as well as President Biden, as well as our governor Prisker, are showing us what the Democratic Party really feels about black people. And oh yeah, Brandon Johnson has been trying to plead his case. Wanna know why? Because of the migrant crisis. You're seeing so many migrants in the city of Chicago costing the city about $300 million. Migrant shelters coming up everywhere. You even see so many immigrants in Chicago selling candy bars on the side of the road, trying to make money. African-Americans are tired of that. Check this out. It's 68,000 Chicagoans that are homeless. Majority of them are black. Our black kids are running rampant out here. Record carjackings, record auto theft and robberies. 
Downtown has three to four illegal families on every block begging for work and selling Kit Kat bars after a billion dollars was spent on them. Where is that money? Where is the money for the South Side and the West Side communities? That should be, that should be the argument. But let's go back to Brandon Johnson trying to plead his goddamn case as mayor. He's trying to beg and plead for people to give him one more chance. Johnson holding up his progressive victories may seem like a shift in strategy, but the mayor insists he's not changed messaging. We've been very consistent with our message from the very beginning. When I announced my candidacy over a year ago, I said we were going to eliminate subminimum wage. We did that. I said we're going to pass paid time off. We did that. I said we're going to invest more in, in youth employment. We've done that. I said we're committed to hiring more detectives. We're doing that. Whether it's a shift or not, some say Johnson is just not connecting. But not black Chicago not having that shit. Not at all. You know when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired? You ever been in a relationship with somebody you just can't really stand them no more? You kind of understand it ain't gonna get no better. They won't brush their teeth. They breath stink. They be farting. Farting sounds. <laughs> they do all that stuff you just can't get rid of. And you love them, but they're not gonna change. That's Black Chicago when it's the Democratic Party. And so now you have this brother who's going viral for saying this. And black people speak for black. Oh, people. yes, sir. Black oh, Americans. Yes, sir. We're not African American. We're not people of color. We're not black and brown, minority. That's right. BIPOC. None of that. People, no, none of that. Strict. This is about our people demanding the resources just as you've given these people. These newcomers who are walking into this country. Right, you were right. And since this is correct, how do you take a new group of people that have paid no taxes, can't vote, and you put them in front of the voters? I'm not going to pay them no damn taxes. And so we say this to you, Mayor, mm -hmm. Governor, President, if you think that they're that powerful, that you have the acquiescence and answer to them over us, then you tell them to vote for you in these next elections. <laughs> That's right. You tell them to support your Democratic National Convention. We're going to show you how, how we feel about the Democratic National Convention. Turn it up. Thank you. If you think you're going to have a peaceful Democratic National Convention in the city of Chicago while our people are starving, that's right. Stay tuned. Oh, man. That's powerful. Here is a brother that's like, look, don't call us African Americans. Don't call us this. Don't call us that. If you Democrats feel like y'all finna come up here and set up shop in Chicago and it's not going to be no stuff in the game, you're crazy. Well, why do they feel like that? I think you know if you've been watching this channel. Migrants have been coming into the city getting what black Chicagoans have been asking for for a long time. They've been overrunning black parks, black community parks. Cata Trust talked about it in this clip. Well, let me just say this. I'm just a regular person here from the city of Chicago. I'm not a person that's known. And how I got involved with the migrant crisis is we got a phone call from our alderman letting us know that Amundsen Park, which is the park where my children grew up playing football, my, co my husband coached football and baseball at that park. We had a call saying that that park was going to be taken away from the community and used as a migrant shelter. And we immediately got on the phone. We started calling the people in the community. We called all of our elected officials. Uh, we called past and former players, coaches, parents, and we, you know, we're like, hey, listen, they're trying to take our park away. We're going to have to rally and pull ourselves together and um, try to see if we can prevent this from happening. And it's with no consideration for how African-Americans in the community feel. Imagine you're supporting a restaurant. You're supporting your own local business. You're supporting your favorite shop and you're spending your money there, but they don't really give a damn how you feel. They don't care about nothing. What do you do after supporting them for like 50 years? You're like, wait a minute, I'm not going to give you my money because you're not giving me what I need. And Kata Trust says she spent money with Brandon Johnson and gave Gave him some time when he ran for mayor. Play that clip. Um, not only did I support Brandon, I campaigned for Brandon, and I gave Brandon money. And so, you know, I was like 10 toes down for him. But one thing about me, 
is if you gonna do the job you better do the job right i don't care who you are i don't care how well i know you i don't care if you my friend you gotta be about your business but yeah black chicagoans are done really what they have seen is their black neighborhoods in their city be overrun by another group of people who have not paid taxes who have not worked i live in africa i pay tons of money in california state tax i pay tons of money in federal tax i ain't even in a goddamn country so i can imagine how they feel living there being there all the damn time and you're paying taxes and if you're happen to be homeless you happen to do this or that then some other group of people come into your spot and then they're trying to get everything that you got how would you feel you will feel like you're messed up and i'm not trying to say the republicans are the best alternative or you know because conservatives got some black sellouts over there too we're gonna talk about that but at the same time people are voting with a motive and the motive is politics create strange bedfellows and the republicans are talking about stopping immigration the republicans are talking about doing x y and z so black chicago ones are like mm, we really don't trust you but politics make strange bedfellows and black chicago ones are just tired of being disrespectful respected not being listened to taking advantage of being walked over okay there was a song by the click back in the 90s e40 sugar t and be legit those from the west coast know what i'm talking about the name of the song was called tired of being stepped on that's right black chicagoans are tired of being stepped on so that's why brandon johnson they bringing out major security because they don't want black democratic people from chicago rioting there and guess what y'all might need to pay some overtime on those security details because people just tired and you know what i don't blame them one bit but guys what do you think it's your boy oshay d jackson back at it again with another episode of the celebrity junk appreciate it for you do subscribe to the bell we're out